Okay, so now let's actually start to take a little bit of data. We want to know how long the string is. And I apologize, I'm in my basement doing this experiment, and I don't have a metric ruler here that is quite long enough to get this the length of this string. So I am using a English set of units for this. So you'll need to do a conversion to go from inches into meters. Okay, so I'm going to put that right over there and the string, this part that's in action is 45.5 inches long. I'll have information on how to do the conversion into metric units for that but 45.5 inches long. Now we're ready to start taking data based on the frequency. So right now I'm at two hertz. And remember with a string like this, we can set up a standing wave. That standing wave is what we're going to observe. And we're going to look at each of the harmonics as we increase the frequency. So it's oftentimes easier to find the second harmonic and tune it in nicely. Okay, I kind of just went through the first harmonic. Now you'll notice occasionally my cable will shake a lot. That's because I'm putting in a frequency that is the resonant frequency of bits and pieces of the table. So I apologize, it's hard to get rid of that noise. Okay, there we go. Looks like we're pretty close. Let's go a little higher and a little lower. Okay, notice just going from 33 or 32 to 33, you can definitely see a change in the amplitude at the node, at the anti-nodes. Okay, 34 is too high, and I can tune this in. Right now, this is 33.0. This second knob allows me to adjust it by the tenth of a hertz. Now, it might be a little tough to see in the video, but what I'm trying to do is get this where this amplitude is the largest it can be. And your perspective and my perspective is slightly different here. So if you have a slightly different value, then what I'm saying, go ahead and use that value. Okay, definitely going up here is getting too large. Getting too high of a frequency, the amplitude is dropping. Okay, there the, the amplitude is dropping. Okay, I'm going to say about here, 33.3 hertz is the frequency of the second harmonic. And remember for the harmonics, we're looking at the number of antinodes that are present. This has two antinodes. This part of the string is moving back and forth really quickly. This part is called a node. It is moving almost not at all. Now, as I go through this, you might see that node move back and forth a little bit. We're going to go with getting it to stand as still as possible. Notice if I go too far, it shifts it a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to keep it there. So anti-node, node, anti-node. Anti Second harmonic, 33.3 hertz. So now I'm going to go back down to the first harmonic. And again, I went through that resonance of the table. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Okay, that's too far down. This is probably too high. 
So it's around 16.3. Let's drop it down just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to say probably right about there. Now again, one thing to be aware of, there are some very definite mathematical relationships that we use when we do sample problems related to this. When you're actually into the lab, the fact that this end of the string is actually moving up and down a tiny bit means it's not quite a perfect node. And in fact, this part of the string back here is going to have an effect. And if the mass down at the bottom starts to swing a little bit, we might run into a situation where the nice numerical pattern that we see for imaginary data or perfect data is going to be slightly different than the mathematical relationship that we'll see here. It should be very, very close. So this number, if I double it, isn't quite 33.3. It's fairly close, but not quite there. That's okay. That's going to be close enough for what we're expecting.